Hello there, God bless you. Hope you and you you and yours are doing very well today. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church in Brooklyn, New York, and it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible and read it together each day. We post these videos five days a week, but you can watch them. You can watch them every day of the week and twice on Sunday if you want to. We're in the Gospel of Luke right now. Love the Gospel of Luke. It's one of my four favorite Gospels. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just turning there now. Today we're reading Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, which puts us in the kind of, com we're completing the first third of the Gospel of Luke. This chapter, chapter 8, is a little longer than recent chapters. It's 56 verses. It's a good page and a half in my Bible. And uh, what do we find here? We've got, we're going to read about women who followed Jesus. And that's one of the things, you know, and, and I don't want to get into the, you know, whole women in ministry discussion. That's a, we don't have time for that. But uh, it is true that there were a number of women among Jesus' disciples. Now, we don't find any women listed among the Twelve, and uh, I've said in other videos, I've drawn the distinction, because the Bible draws the distinction. Um, when we talk about the Twelve Disciples, you know, we're talking about, you know, these, these Twelve that we're familiar with, that Jesus was closest with. But Jesus begins to refer to them as apostles, to distinguish them from the larger group of disciples, because there were many more disciples of Jesus even during Jesus' earthly ministry, than these original twelve. And among them were a, a, a number of women. Uh, Jesus is going to share in this chapter the parable of the lamp. There's a brief discussion, three verses, on the true family of Jesus. Jesus will calm the storm. He's going to heal a demon-possessed man. He's going to then heal in response to faith. So that's what we have to look forward to in Luke chapter 8. Uh, let's dig in. Verse 1 begins. Soon afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his twelve disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, wife of Chusa, which probably that C-H is pronounced differently in the outside of English, Herod's uh, business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. One day... Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A farmer went out to plant a seed, and as he scattered it across the field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still other seed fell on fertile soil, and this seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he said this, he called out, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him what this parable meant, and he replied, You're permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word, and the seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, 
They believe for a while, and then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's Word and cling to it and patiently produce a huge harvest. Uh, other Gospels tell the same parable, and it says they produce a harvest 30, 60, or even 100 times more than was planted. Verse 16, the parable of the lamp. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. <clears throat> a lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house, for, that is, uh, for all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open. And everything that is concealed will be brought into light and made known to all. So pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. Then Jesus' mother came to see him and his brothers. But they couldn't get in to see him because of the crowd. And someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside and they want to see you. And Jesus replied, my mother and my brothers are all those who hear God's word and obey it. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. And so they got into a boat and started out. And as they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. Soon a fierce storm came down on the lake and the boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm, and he asked them, Where's your faith? The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man, they asked each other, when he gives a command, even the wind and the waves obey him. So they arrived in the region of the Gazarenes, across the lake from, the, from Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. For a long time he had been homeless and naked, living in a cemetery outside of town. As soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell down in front of him, and then he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. The spirit had taken control of the man often, and even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles, he simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness completely under the demon's power. Jesus demanded, What is your name? Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby, and the demons begged him to let them enter the pigs. So, Jesus gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw it, they fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened, and a crowd soon gathered around Jesus. They saw the man who had been freed from the demons. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what had happened told the others how the demon-possessed man had been healed. And all the people in the region of the Gazarenes begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone. For a great wave of fear swept over them. Jesus returned to the boat and left. Crossing back to the other side of the lake, the man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him home saying, no. Go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went through all the towns, proclaiming the great things that Jesus had done for him. On the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they'd been waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of a local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with them, he was surrounded by the crowds, and a woman in the crowd who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding 
She could find no cure, and coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe, and immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fall to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, and he told him, your daughter's dead. There's no use in troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, James, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, Stop weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him because they all knew she had died. And then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, My child, get up. At that moment, her life returned, and she immediately stood up. And then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted they not tell anyone what had happened. That's the end of Luke uh, chapter 8. Again, a little bit longer chapter. Uh, a lot of uh, just really profound things highlighted and discussed in this chapter. Uh, I just, you know, something in this chapter. I've been really, uh, God's been teaching me a lot lately. Um, concerning the parable of the farmer scattering seed. And um, I won't, I'm not going to speak to that just because uh, I preached that in our church recently and I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to record that, that sermon for people to have access to. But, uh, you know, when Jesus heals this demon-possessed man, this is a man whose just life has been ruined by this affliction. And, and Jesus, Jesus just brings healing. Everybody's afraid. They beg Jesus to go away from them. Can you imagine? Everybody's saying, Jesus, we don't want you here. You're disrupting things here. This, this isn't what we're used to here. We need you to go. Everybody except for the man who had been healed. The man who had been healed really said, listen, they, they may want you to go, but let me come with you. And I think just one of the messages there is that uh, when, we, when, we have a, when we have a sincere and life-changing encounter with Jesus, it doesn't really matter how everybody else feels. Uh, we want more of Jesus. And so that's my prayer for you, that uh, as we go through these daily devotions, you'll have an encounter with Jesus, and, 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 and you'll want more of Jesus too. Thanks so much for participating in today's video. I hope you'll join us again next time when we read Luke chapter 9. God bless you.